Hey everybody, it's Mr. Zavo. Uh, we're going to be uh, conducting some lessons uh, this way, uh, kind of we're calling it asynchronously or on demand as I like to call it. Uh, so we're going to start with our first lesson here. We're going to offer it a little bit on demand, maybe go through some of this uh, in person as well, live. Uh, but uh, it's going to be try different things this year and see what works for you and what works for me and uh, try to find uh, something that we can definitely work with going forward. So going ahead and getting started with section 1.1 in our textbook and our goal is to be able to define and recognize common geometric terms. So points, lines, line segments, rays, angles, and triangles are going to be some of the terms that we focus on right now. You can see here that two words that we have to focus on right away are the union and the intersection. Um, the union is uh, when a set one and a set two are combined, and it's all points or all data points that are within those two sets, set one or set two is what we think about when we say union, and we use that uh, symbol that looks like a U. And for intersection, we use a symbol that looks like an upside down U, and we call that the intersection, and it is where sets one and two overlap, okay? and it's set one and set two, things that are in set one and set two. So a couple of quick examples here. We think about the colors at Hawthorne, the colors at Vernon Hills. Uh, Hawthorne, we have blue and yellow, and Vernon Hills, we have blue and silver. So we could represent this using a Venn diagram where we have both of these have blue. Blue is the overlap. It's what there is in both. It's the and. So that would be representing the intersection of these two sets. And we would put blue in that intersection part. And then the yellow is only a Hawthorne color, whereas silver is only a Vernon Hills color. So we would represent them in our Venn diagram like this. And then listing all three colors, but listing blue only once would be the representation of the union. So the union, we only have to represent something once, even if it appears more than one time. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and give you guys a minute here, maybe press pause. So that's going to be one of the things that we learn about how to write notes from videos. So maybe go ahead and press pause and try this. So write down that you have the odd counting numbers, what that set looks like, write what that set for the perfect square is less than 10, and then see if you can fill out that Venn diagram. Now, real quick, when I say set, notice that up here, I use these braces, those are called, and then commas to identify a new term within that set. That's what we're looking to do. So a set is going to have braces on the end representing a set. It's the set of, and then commas are going to se separate each term. So write down the odd counting numbers less than 10 in a set notation. The perfect square is less than 10 in a set notation, and then fill out our Venn diagram. Go ahead and press pause while you're doing it. So hopefully we've got our Venn diagram, we've got our uh, sets set up, and then we'll talk real quick at here at the bottom here, the union and the intersection. So again, the upside down U, or the U, looks like is the union, and that's when we're listing all items in a row. And you don't list an item if it appears more than once, you don't list it more than once. So if it's in the intersection, you just really are listing every item that's inside the Venn diagram. It's typical to write those down in if they're numbers in numerical order. So in this case, the union would be one and three and four and five and seven and nine. Those are the terms that appear in here. Even though one and nine are appear twice up here, it don't doesn't get listed twice in the union. Okay. And then lastly, the intersection here is one and nine. Excellent. Moving on to a little bit more geometry. All right, so for numbers one and two on this side, I'm gonna do them with you. Not because I don't think you can do them, but more because I wanna talk a little bit about the uh, the proper way to write everything here. So when we talk here, it says, where does segment DG intersect segment EG? So you've got a segment bar. It's important to know that that's a segment because it doesn't have any arrows on the end of the bar above it. And so that's a really important distinction in how you write in geometry. So communication is going to be key, both verbally and written. So we know those are saying that this is a segment. So we can write this segment DG intersect segment EG at, well, where do they cross? That's right, they cross at point E. Again, 
we're going to list that as a capital letter. Points are written as capital letters, and I'm going to get into points and lines and planes and things like that a little bit more in our live session. Um, this is just more specifically about what are the answers um, and some of these details, but we'll talk more about points and lines and planes uh, and defining that a little bit better in our live session. So segment DG intersects segment EG at point E. That's how we would verbalize that statement. Okay. Next, what is the union of ray ED and ray EH? I know it's a ray because of the line segment above with one arrow. Okay. And when we do it that way, it means it starts here at E. E is listed first as a very specific reason. So it starts at E and it goes in the direction of D forever. That's what a ray does. So that's this ray ED. Okay. And ray EH also starts at E and it goes forever in the direction of H. So now that's this ray here. And what is the union of those? So that means everything put together. If I put those two rays together, what does it form? Well, it forms an angle. Now, very specifically, two important things about angles. They are written with an angle symbol. Okay? If you look at mine and you think, oh, it looks like a capital L, or you look at yours and you think it looks like a capital L, put a little angle mark in there. And that's going to just like a little tick mark around there representing that as an angle as opposed to a capital L. Now I'm naming this specifically as an angle. It's kind of like a prefix, like I am Mr. Zabo. Okay? That's the Mr. part of it. So you have to specifically state that that's an angle. Okay? Then angles are named with three letters and the vertex is always directly in the middle. This vertex is E. E is going to be in the middle when I name this angle. D will be one of them and H will be the other. Angle DEH. I also have the option of naming this angle HED. That's the same angle. I cannot name it with anything other than E as the vertex, so in the middle, and then a point on one ray and a point on the other ray. All right. Take a minute and try numbers three and four. Okay? And if you get those, keep going, but I'm going to go over numbers three and four specifically next. So press pause, try three and four. All right, so for number three, again, it's the union of two rays. The union of two rays is oftentimes going to form an angle. So it can be angle UTR or angle RTU. Either one, you do not need to give me both. And the intersection of ray TU and ray TR, they cross or they touch, they share point T. All right, next, go ahead and press pause again and try to find all of these unions and intersections here. Again, press pause, unpause when you're ready to check your work. All right, go ahead and reading this again, line JK, so that's this whole line here, and triangle JKL, and we want the intersection. What do they share? They share just from J to K, and that's a segment. Okay. Segment J to K, segment K to L, intersection, what do they share? It's just point K. The union, so put together ray JK, so if we try to visualize this, ray JK and ray KJ together, they form that whole line because it starts at J and goes forever that direction, starts at K, goes forever in the opposite direction. That's a line, so it's line JK. And then ray JK and ray KJ intersection. Intersection and union are different. Okay, union, I wanted all of it. That's the whole line. Intersection is where do they share? What do they overlap? And that's just the segment. Really important differentiation. Okay. And then uh, segment JL is this segment here with segment KM. That's this segment here. What does their intersection, not the union, there isn't one. 
They never share anything. They don't touch. So that's called the empty set or the null set, and it's illustrated this way. And then lastly, segment JK, segment KL, and segment JL. Oh, there's our three segments. They form a triangle. So we list with a triangle symbol, and then all three vertex or vertices of that triangle in any order. So I did JKL, JLK, you can do KLJ, you can do LJK, it doesn't really matter as long as you have those three vertices with the triangle symbol. All right, last and certainly not least, I want you guys to try this problem. We are going to talk about this problem when you get back in from your video session here. Okay, so when we get into our live session, we're going to talk about this problem. Go ahead and come prepared with answers to this.